All right, hello. We're going to look at some work by Annie Leibowitz, who is going to be the inspiration for our next assignment. And um, hopefully you've seen some of her work before. In fact, I know you've seen her work before, whether you knew it or not. Um, but theoretically, if you've done yesterday's e-learning, you've actually looked in depth at one of her works. So Annie does celebrity and to some degree now fashion photography. Um, she's been around for decades. She started in the uh, early 70s, late 60s, um, shooting for Rolling Stone magazine, um, where she was, you know, really establishing herself as like a premier uh, music and rock and roll uh, photojournalist. Um, she toured with, of course, the Rolling Stones, but many other artists as well. Um, and this is what really made her famous. Um, from there, she went on to do all kinds of other projects and shoot for many other magazines, uh, Vogue, Vanity Fair. Um, but some of her most iconic images um, came from those early days at the Rolling Stones. Now, um, when you guys looked at photos, you probably picked out more modern, contemporary ones. And she certainly, certainly still is working. Um, in fact, if you were to go to the drugstore, you would probably see um, at least one magazine with her image on the cover. Um, but I kind of just wanted to go on a quick overview of some of her work and how it's going to influence our project. So it's portraiture, right? That's what the gist of our assignment is, is portraiture, and that's what she does. Some of her images look very natural. Um, but some images are, are far from that. She did a whole series with um, Walt Disney recreating <clears throat> iconic characters with um, celebrities. Um, they're almost always going to be tied to pop culture because she's shooting for magazines. Um, or in some cases, and I, th I th think she shot their wedding. Um, but some of them, like I said, are more elaborate setups. And some, I mean, that's just, who's that, Mick? Uh, in the elevator. Um, but some are a lot of CGI and composing multiple elements. But what I want us to focus on, because this is not really practical for us, is there a use of light, use of composition, um, and you know that's what I've said about every single assignment so far. Is yes, there's an assignment for this week, and this is the first time I'm dictating subject matter to you. But yes, there's assignment, but the most important thing is light and composition how emphasis is created here, how there's a sense of movement backwards almost through light and placement. Far simpler, so this is Annie herself. Um, I don't know how many, there's a number of self-portraits that, that could be on here as well. Like it's very much feels like a self-portrait. It looks very much in her style. But again, use of light, And they needn't be complex. This is actually a portrait of Sally Mann taken by Andy Leibowitz. And you can see a subtle reflection here, as if Andy's shooting through the window looking into her studio, which is the case. But I think those added elements are going to be what are key to you being able to control your composition. Um, if you're just shooting a straightforward portrait like this is, it's going to rely on light, of course, which we have a nice light here, but you're going to need to bring in other elements, whether that's the arm here, you know, creating some framing and a little bit of movement, um, or other elements. You've got, again, framing here. Let's see, a good example of some other elements being brought in that are, are practical for you. 
depth here, you know, not just a straightforward portrait. You have something near middle far, I think, is going to create a more complex uh, environment for you. Um, a lot of times she is going to use, like, studio lighting. That probably is not practical for you. However, you can bring in other lamps. You can bring in windows. I think wind. I mean, where's the picture of the queen where it was literally... You have this. Well, maybe you don't have a window that big, but the lighting that she used for this portrait is effectively just basic soft light from a window. Um, again, not every photo that you're going to see that she's done is a good reference for you, but I do want you to consider those things of light and a principle of design. Let's go back up to the top. Um, Disney Rolling Stone portfolio. Um, let's just go most famous, right? Um, and what's going to dictate a lot of the success of her photos are the fame of the celebrity. But I think one thing that she narrows in on is how she photographs them. Um, you know, this is such a simple portrait of Jennifer Lawrence, but... I think it's like kind of classic and sophisticated, which is how she wanted to be portrayed. Um, a lot of the decisions that she's making, whether they're obvious or subtle, are intended to, you know, influence how you see that person whether they're a comedian or an actor and they're looking to be more dramatic. Look how brooding and like contemplative he looks there. And it, I mean, it depends whether they're an actor, a politician or an athlete um, on not only how she's going to set it up, but how she's going to pose them, how she's going to light it. Let's jump then to some student examples and get something a little bit more practical. And that would be here. Um, so some past student examples. Not 100% not of these are students, but um, I do want to go through some because they're going to be more successful than others. Kaylee did a great job. I mean, light, other elements, composition. Just please, just follow that formula. That's all I'm asking. Light, composition. Um, here, I think the shadows are interesting. Bringing in paint is fine if you want to do it, but make sure you're considering light, which I don't think was very well considered here. Um, and understand that I'm not grading face painting. I'm creating the portrait. So you can bring that in, but the overall photo is what needs to be evaluated. Um, window light, controlling light. I mean, I, I can only say it so many times. Here the movement and emphasis created. Very strong. You know, another, like maybe this is a nice portrait, but I don't see a clear principle of design because it's kind of just this even soft light. Digital manipulation is one thing, but that's not very practical for us in this current situation. Reflections like this, however, are very accessible. Um, let's see here. Again, a number of these might be good portraits, but for the context of this project and the rubric that we're using, I need to see a clear principle of design. And other elements, bringing in other elements, whether it's ribbon or the use of light, is going to be how you can do that. Nice light here. This is just window light. Um, here, she used paint, but not just painting for paint's sake. Paint to create a principle of design. Contrast. Now, some of you may struggle to find a model to work with. That's fine. You can do a self-portrait. 
Again, window light is doing all of the work here with contrast. You can do a self-portrait, um, and it doesn't have to be a, like a portrait portrait like you would have seen Annie doing or even how many of these are. Let's try and find some that are more abstract. Here we can barely see much of the face. That's totally fine. I should perhaps define for you portrait. A portrait is an artistic representation of a person. By that definition, you do not have to have the face in the photo. By that definition, you don't even technically have to have the person in the photo. I like the use of light here to create emphasis really good. As long as you're representing the person, it would count as a portrait. Now, it's extremely difficult to do that and not have the person in the portrait, but even this, like there's no face at all, it's just a wrist and a hand, but I think in your artist statement, you could argue how this represents the person and be okay. Nice use of light, nice use of light. Well, um, if you have questions and you want to see follow-up examples, um, there's all the past groups that are accessible to you through Flickr, and then there's all of the internet. In fact, there's all of the internet that um, could take you to, well, I guess this is my channel, but just search for videos on portrait lighting. Now that's going to get you really straightforward standard portrait lighting, which isn't necessarily what we're looking for, but maybe throw in words like abstract portrait lighting or expressive portrait lighting and think about how you can use those not just to take a good portrait, but to uh, create a good principle of design and composition.